Hello and welcome back to another session of Microtech Canada's online MTCNA course. This is episode 20 of this series, and today our discussion will be revolving around the topic of router OS logins. We'll start with a few small tips about the first time you log into a device, then talk about the issue of creating or removing users and the settings that surround router OS users, and finish off by showing you some of the ways you can log in to your router. If you remember from one of our very first sessions, the factory default username for all Microtech hardware is admin and it does not have any password. The very first time that you connect to a Microtech router, you will see a prompt that asks you to set up a new password. If you open a new terminal, at this stage, you will see the same request. You can skip either of these two prompts, but in your very first login, it is highly recommended that you change your router's password right there and then. Next, by referring to the system menu and the user submenu, you can access the authorized users defined on your hardware. Since only one default user exists, the next important step is to create a new user unique to your device. First, you'll input your username. Then, you'll select the group of this specific user. We'll talk about user groups in a couple of minutes, but for now, we'll set the group to full. Allowed address is used to determine one or more source addresses or source address ranges that will be the only source addresses from which this specific user will be able to connect to this device. The next field will show the last login time and date of this user and finally you'll have to input your password for this user. In addition to the common commands on the right, you have the expire password button. By clicking on this button, the current password of this user will be expired and the next time you log into your device with this user, you will be given the same password expired prompt that will ask you to define a new password. Once your new user is created, you can go ahead and delete the previous factory default user. To create or delete users, you can use new terminal as well. Here at the beginning of the command line, you can see your active user and the router identity. By typing in user and then print, you can see the list of your current users. To create a new user in the new terminal window, type user followed by add and the intended user's name. Then you should select the group, so type in your group of choice and finally input your desired password for this user. By pressing enter, you can see that this new user will be added to the list of existing users defined on this router. To remove a user in the terminal window, you can just as easily type user, followed by remove and the intended user's corresponding number, or simply user, remove, and then the corresponding number for that certain user. Now, as we mentioned, when adding a new user, you can assign user groups. By default, these groups are full, read, and write. Via the Groups tab, you can access these user groups, and if you wish, you can start defining more customized groups as you see fit. The first group titled Full is able to utilize all router OS user policies and the only feature disabled by default is Dude. The second group that is Read is restricted regarding the FTP, Write, Policy and Dude policies. And the third group that is Write is only restricted on FTP, Policy and Dude. The REST API policy that you can see here has been added in Router OS version 7 and it's the only addition here compared with the Router OS version 6. By clicking on the plus add button, you can define a new user group. You'll first have to pick a name for this group, then choose what policies you'd like to enable, and finally choose a skin. We'll talk in detail about the skin feature once we get to the subject of Router OS branding down the road. As an example, we'll create a user group titled Test and enable all policies except Winbox. Then, we'll go back to the Users tab and assign the user group Test to the user titled Class User. As you can see, the group for this user is now changed. Now, given the restriction regarding Winbox for this user, if we attempt to connect to this router with the class user credentials, will receive an error reply and will not be able to log on to our router. The two SSH tabs in the Users window refer to the import of public or private SSH keys. SSH, or Secure Shell, is a network communication protocol that will allow two hosts to communicate and share data. 
By using SSH keys, you'll be able to run scripts and log into router OS from a remote machine using public or private key authentication. And the final tab you have in this window is the Active Users tab, which is both quite useful and important. This tab will show you the details of all users that are actively connected to your hardware. As you can see, we currently have one active user, that is us, titled the Class AP with a Mac Winbox connection to this router. If we open a new terminal, another user with a local connection will be added to our active users list. If we open the trainee router on the right, you'll see that by simply logging onto our router, an active user titled MTCNA test will be shown with a Mac Winbox connection. Now, back on the Class AP, if we refer to the Tools menu and the Telnet submenu, we can establish Telnet, SSH, or Mac Telnet connections to our neighbors. To establish a Telnet connection, we'll input the corresponding address of 10001 previously defined on the trainee router. Once we click on the Telnet button, the router will ask for our credentials to connect to the trainee router. Once the Telnet connection is established, you can see that a new user will be added to the trainee router's list of active users through a Telnet connection. Similarly, we can establish an SSH connection from the Class AP to the trainee router. By inputting the destination address of 10001 and the username, you'll be asked for the password. Just like Telnet, once the SSH connection is established, another user will be added to the list of active users on the trainee router. And finally, we can establish a Mac Telnet connection. You can either refer to the IP menu and the neighbor's submenu to manually find the MAC address of neighboring devices, or simply choose the discoverable MAC addresses from the menu here. Once again, you'll have to input your credentials for the trainee router, and when connected, another user, this time with a MAC Telnet connection, will be added to your list of active users. Now, before we go, there's one more thing. You may have noticed that some of the dates and times on our routers are way off. That's because we still haven't set up the NTP or Network Time Protocol, which we'll discuss in later episodes. Thank you so much for bearing with us. We hope you have enjoyed this video. As always, drop your questions in the comments and stay with us for upcoming tutorials. Till then, stay safe.